Namo Amirabutsu. This past last week was insane. I paid rent early, but we switched managers at my apartment complex and somehow the owner gathered my rent but forgot to tell the apartment managers that had taken over my complex that I had paid rent. So me and my roommate got an eviction notice. Well, long story short, I straightened it. He and I, my, actually my roommate, we got things straightened out, at least for the time being. But the chaos, the stress, and the frustration this situation created also created a surge of various emotions, resentment, rage, anger, worrying whether or not I was going to be thrown out on the streets, whether we were going to be thrown out on the streets. Also, the following week, there was stress at work. <clears throat> this is the Saha realm. It is unpredictable. The Saha realm is filled with positive and negative karma. Now today, I had my Amitaji Dharma talk with the rest of my Sangha members and our leader, Josho Adrian Kirlia Sensei. And it was excellent. It was excellent. And, I, and as I said in a previous video, this is why I'm here. This world in and of itself doesn't hold that much for me. What holds much for me is the honor of sharing my Dharma experience with Amida Buddha. The fact that I have a living personal relationship with this living Buddha named Amida. Describing to you all what it means to have Shinjin, this knowing without a doubt that I will be born in my next life after I die in this one in the pure land of Amitabha Buddha, this makes life worth living for me. People are unpredictable in this realm. I went to do laundry this morning, way early this morning. I went to the laundromat uh, because we've been having construction around my apartment complex and honestly it, you know, it's been such a stress, stressful week at work. I, I just wanted to be left alone. But it's like you'll meet up with people, whether in a laundromat or at a grocery store, that you know just don't like you and maybe even hate you on spot, on site, without even knowing you. But they know you and you know them. Maybe not in this life, but you've known them and encountered them without a doubt in a previous life. Oftentimes on these videos, I'll talk about the resentments I have toward my parents. And I, I talked about this in our Sangha meeting this morning. And I talked about how even as a Christian, I was taught you can't love someone and hate someone because love is of G Jesus and God and hate is of the devil. And I knew this couldn't be true because I loved and hated my family, all of them, simultaneously. I loved and hated them at the same time. 
I loved my father. He was a good provider. He could be very loving, compassionate, and affectionate to me. We had some deep, warm conversations in my life. The same with my sister and my mother. At the same time, I hated all of them for the reasons I've talked about. The verbal abuse, the constant put-downs, the constant criticism, the constant nagging and judging. These are the things I remember the most, but I tend to forget the fact that there was a lot of closeness there, positive as well as negative. It's the same in general with your co-workers, the people you encounter in the line at the bank, tellers, clerks, people you pass on the street. We have encountered each other in previous lives. And I talked about this and the Sangha meeting. And we talked about how important it is when you automatically feel resentment towards someone or you react to someone being hostile to you. And what I do now is I will offer them up to Amida in my mind. I will pray to Amida to guide them, to lead them, to receive his primal vow at some point in their life or in one of their next lives. Knowing that in my next life I will be a Buddha and I will lead all people I've encountered positively and negatively and guide them to the pure land. And that's why I'm here. I'm here, for those of you who are watching this video, I am here so that people will see me walking down the street with my prayer beads, with a Buddha t-shirt, with a Buddha pendant, And almost always when I'm walking to the bus stop, from the bus stop, to work, waiting in line at the bank, waiting in line at the checkout at the grocery store, I am silently saying Nimbutsu with prayer beads in hand. This is a connection with Amida Buddha in some way or another. It is my constant wish that people understand Amida is a real Buddha. He is there for you, always. Amida Buddha is someone living and able to help you. Now, saying Nimbutsu or entrusting myself to Amida is not going to purify my bad karma in this life. What will help purify or better, not purify, but better my bad karma in turn create good karma is by not interacting with the negative thoughts and emotions and reactions that I have in my head. By changing my focus, by attempting as best I can, and I'm not always successful, I wasn't last week, I wasn't this week, but there were moments I was successful in changing my focus either to Amida or to something else. More often than not, I'm focusing on Nimbutsu and Amida 
but not in trying to fix myself, not in trying to create good thoughts. because when i do that, i'm actually wrestling with the bad thoughts i'm creating this tension i'm actually continuing and strengthening my focus on the negative feelings i have. like if a customer blows up at me and i had that last week a long time customer that i dealt with was a jerk and you know, it's like, you know, why did this happen? And the, and the resentments come, and the anger, and all the other thoughts that go with it. I've gotten to the point more and more where I just say to myself, this is a result of my karma. Everything I experience in this Saha realm is a result of my karma, either in this lifetime or in previous lifetimes. So be it. As Shakyamuni Buddha said to Angulimal, once Angulimal repented of his sins and became a monk and a follower and disciple of Shakyamuni Buddha, endure monk. As I remember, Angulimal, and Angulimal, for those of you who don't know, he was a vicious serial killer. He would cut people's hands off and make necklaces out of their hands. That's how fucked up in the head he was. And once he became a monk, I guess he expected that he would become pure of heart and pure of mind and everyone would love him and forgive him. And yet, people who he, whose loved ones he had murdered wanted to kill him. They wanted to torture him to death probably wanted to hang him, burn him alive, or slowly strip the skin off of him, evil things. Because it's human nature to want to return the evil that other people do to you, and I'm no different. Once someone shits on me, I want to shit back on them. It's only in my later years that I'm no longer taken over with the urge to do that. I, I, I'm like, okay, look, you're having your Dexter thoughts, you're having your negative evil thoughts, you know, you're a child of abuse. You come from an abused home. You know, your buttons have been pushed. You've been triggered, however you want to put it. And I tell myself this and I say, okay, I'm going to just stop thinking about this. And normally at that time, I start saying Nibutsu. Or, and this works a lot, especially if I'm walking to or from work, and one of these thoughts will come into my head, I will look at a shrub of flowers. I will look at trees. Trees always get me. I love trees. I will listen to birds and see birds flying around and suddenly that takes my focus off the crap that's going on in my mind. Now I want to reiterate something. Saying Nimbutsu, I don't say Nimbutsu to cure myself of my earthly ills in this life. It, I've tried, it doesn't work. I'm screwed up and I'll be screwed up more or less until the day I die. I don't know how things will progress for me as I get older. It is, it is as it is. In the meantime, I am here to promote entrusting in the primal vow. And the primal vow is to entrust yourself and your karmic destiny to Amitabha Buddha, say his name and wish to be born in, your, in his pure land of ultimate bliss and peace. And then if you truly entrust him and don't doubt, you will be born after you die in this world in the pure land of ultimate bliss and peace. But in the meantime, you've got to put up with the shit created by your karma. 
in this life and in previous lives. Oh well, what you gonna do? That being said, I cannot think of a better way to live my life than I am living right now. For me, living as a person of Shenzhen, which basically equates to living in a prison until I know I'm going to be released. And that's what the Saha realm is. It's a prison. My sensei, Joshua Adrian Kirlia of Amida G Temple, made a video that I watched, and I watch it again and again and again, where he's sitting on the property of Amidaji in Romania and it's there's snow everywhere. And he talks about the Saha world. He talks about how stupid it is to want to be happy in a prison. You know you're a prisoner. You know you've got to serve your time in prison. And though I've never, as of yet, actually been to jail or prison, I live here in the Saha realm, where bullshit is king. And I will continue to live here as long as I live here. When I no longer live here, and I've used up all of my good and bad karma, I will die, and I will go to Amida's pure land of ultimate bliss and peace, without question, without doubt. I serve Amida in the meantime. I focus on the Buddha Amida. I focus on his Dharma. And I am a member of his Sangha, Amida Ji Temple. This is the best life I can have. Most people think that if I have a million dollars or a billion dollars, I will be happy. But if you want to find out if that works or not, just read the news. You know, find out about all the celebrities. Find out all the millionaires that, you know, are up on murder charges. All money does is give you free reign to act out your Sangha behavior. You just have more money to do it with. I am grateful for this life. Am I happy? No, I'm not happy. I'm in prison. But I find moments of happiness in prison, as most prisoners do. My true and only real happiness will take place once this life and this realm ends and I go to Amida's pure land. Then not only will I be happy, I will be with you who are watching this video, whether it's in this life or the next. Some of you will be with me in the pure land when that happens, when that takes place. Others, I will be guiding you and I make that promise without any doubt. Because I know Amida is real. I know that Shenzhen is real. My faith in Amida is actual real faith. Therefore, I know Amida and his pure land are real. As best as I can understand real living in this dream, because this is a dream, There used to be a movie 
dead man walking about a man who was going to death row. I guess that's why I'm entitling this video Dead Man Dreaming. Because I will not truly feel alive until I go to Amida's Pure Land. There I will become a fully enlightened Buddha. There I will go to many realms simultaneously in a way that I cannot comprehend in this life. I will visit and touch the lives of countless beings where they are, understanding completely their needs in terms of spiritual growth. Now the best I can do is merely muddle along, stay alive as best I can, and share the message of what Amida has done for me. I wish all of you to find Amida in your life. I wish all of you to entrust yourselves to Amida. Say his name in faith, wish to be born in his pure land. Give him a chance, give the primal vow of Amida Buddha, the 18th vow, in his 48 vows, a chance. Take the chance that Amida might be real. Take the chance that maybe when you die, you could go to the pure land. It's worth the risk. Namo Amida Butsu.